What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Say You Wanna Learn Sundays. Today, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be taking a look at a thermal imaging camera effect. I was watching the music video for, I think it's Juvier. I could be completely butchering the name, sorry if I am. I was watching the music video for that particular song by Brockhampton the other day, and I was like, this is kind of cool. I get the feeling they filmed theirs on a thermal imaging camera, but you can make a similar effect in After Effects. And today, that's what I wanna show you guys how to do. So let's jump into it. So the very first thing you wanna do is grab the rotor brush tool and using that, outline anything that you want to have the thermal imaging camera effect. Because we're gonna be dropping the background into like that deep blue, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's just your subject. So in this case, I'm outlining myself and you can see I'm just going around the edges to make sure everything's selected. And if anything's selected that I don't want to be, if you hit Alt on your keyboard and click, you'll see the little marker turns red and that basically deselects any areas that you previously had selected that you didn't wanna select. So what you wanna do now is go through frame by frame and just make sure that your rotoscope stays covering your entire subject and doesn't move. You can see here, I got a few areas popping in that I didn't want to be part of my thermal imaging kind of area um, and some areas that I did want to be that had moved out. So basically you just wanna go through frame by frame and make sure that the entire time your subject is highlighted and nothing else. So once you're happy that your mask is in place, I'm just making a few finishing touches here. You wanna go ahead and click and drag this bar to make sure it covers the entire area. Then go down to the freeze button and hit that. What that does is ensures that After Effects knows exactly where that mask is and it's not gonna make any more changes to it or let you make any more changes to it unless you unfreeze it and make the changes. Now, this process can be a little CPU heavy, so if you don't have the fastest computer in the world, I wouldn't try to click on anything because there's good odds it will crash your computer. So just let it do its thing, and then when it's finished, move on to the next step. So when the rotor brush tool's finished freezing your mask, you're gonna have something that looks a little like this, just a cutout of your subject on a transparent background. The next step is to go ahead and duplicate the background layer and delete the rotor brush from that layer. So what you then end up with is essentially yourself superimposed onto yourself, but in a different shot. Then head to your effects browser and type in color armor. Drop that onto the background layer, then using the output cycle function, head to use preset palette and select solarize blue. Feather your mask in such a way that you don't have such an edge to the superimposed version of your subject because it's going to make stuff look weird further down the line. Once you've got something that you're happy with dialed in, go ahead and just do double check back through your footage to make sure that everything does look pretty good. Then go ahead, grab color armor again, drop that onto your foreground layer, and then using the preset palette again, go ahead and pick RGB. It's at this point you can begin messing around with the colors and figuring out what you want to go for in your shot. So for me, I wanted red, green, blue, and yellow. I wanted the clothes to be mostly blue with the face and hands being red and yellow and with some green just chucked in for, for a bit of variation. Now, if you click anywhere on the color wheel, like shown just there, you can add any custom colors that you want to add. So I added another blue. I actually took the green out because I couldn't get it to fit somewhere in the spectrum right at that exact moment, and I added it back in. But you can basically make any color array that you, you like. Once I was happy with the colors that I had, I went ahead and pre-composed my layer. I dropped a levels adjustment onto the layer and made some adjustments just so that there was less detail in the picture to make it look more like a heat map. I also then jumped back into the pre-comp and selected my foreground layer, my subject, and added a Gaussian blur. This just gave it, again, that level of depth of the heat map rather than an image with an overlaid color. And I also made some adjustments to the levels here as well. All right, guys, so that is the end of the video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit different. We're looking at After Effects. We're looking at some effects from music videos. It's all it's all different. If you did like it, let me know down in the comments. Be sure to hit the like button if you, if you did. Go ahead, hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. I'd love to have you here as part of the community. Take it easy, guys, and I will be back with a regular vlog on Tuesday. Peace.